सर्वाइवर वो से क्वेश्चन ऑफ द हेड एंड नेक सिस्टम Now the head and neck system, it is a slightly confusing kind of region, and uh, when it comes to the viva, we are many times confused before answering the questions. Now we will just talk about the most commonly asked questions in the viva, and the answers you should know or what you have to answer. Now first of all, regarding the external carotid artery, when we talk about the external carotid artery, these can be the various questions which can be asked from you. Regarding the external carotid artery, it is one of the branch of the common carotid. The common carotid it terminates into external and the internal carotid artery. So the common carotid artery it ends into external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery, and it divides into these two at the level of upper border of thyroid cartilage and to be more specific upper border of lamina of thyroid cartilage now this is lying at the level of uh, level of disc between c3 and c4 so we can just mention in bracket disc between c3 and c4 vertebra so this is the level at which the external carotid artery is originating or we can we can say it starts at this level when we talk about this common carotid artery we have right common carotid and the left common carotid artery both these are having different points of origin so we should know regarding that too so we will first mention it first of all the right common carotid artery the origin of the right common carotid artery is from brachiocephalic artery the brachiocephalic artery this brachiocephalic artery in turn takes origin from the arch of aorta the left common carotid artery the origin of this left common carotid artery is directly from arch of aorta so we can see that uh, the origin of these two arteries are different and uh, over here only we will just mention so that you just to revise that when we talk about the arch of aorta it is ha having three branches and these three branches it includes first of all it gives off the brachiocephalic artery which is on the right side the brachiocephalic artery then it gives off the left common carotid artery and the third branch is left the third branch is left subclavian artery now we come to the external carotid artery the external carotid artery as it runs above in the neck and towards the face it gives off various branches so for the external carotid artery the various branches of external carotid artery one of the branch which is given from the anta aspect of the external carotid artery is superior thyroid artery which run downwards in the neck and reaches towards the superior portion of thyroid lobe or the thyroid gland so as to supply it so this superior thyroid artery next is the lingual artery this is also a nta branch it runs forwards and upwards towards the oral cavity and it is uh, passing deep to the hyoglossus muscle so as to reach the oral cavity then another is the facial artery again the nta branch then we have a medial branch that is a ascending pharyngeal artery <clears throat> over here these three these were the nta branches the ascending pharyngeal this is the first branch of this external carotid and this is the medial artery medial branch this is the medial branch then the next we talk about the posterior branches those are the occipital arteries the posterior auricular artery the posterior auricular artery these two are the posterior branches these two are the posterior branches now this external carotid artery after giving all these branches it will terminate into two branches and those two branches are maxillary artery and the superficial temporal artery so these two branches the maxillary and the superficial temporal artery these are the terminal 
branches. These are the terminal branches. Now over here we see that there are total 8 branches, 2 are the terminal branches and the, the rest of the branches as I have mentioned over here. Now over here in the facial artery, it can be further asked that uh, uh, what are the branches of the facial artery. So if we talk about the branches of the facial artery, the facial artery it is running in the neck and then it reaches the face. So we say the facial artery it is having two parts, one is the cervical part. and another is the facial part. Now the cervical part which is running in the neck, when it is running in the neck, it is related to the submandibular gland and over here in this neck only it is giving various branches. Now the various branches which are given, one is ascending palatine artery, then we have tonsillar artery which is the main artery for the palatine tonsil submental artery and the glandular branches. Now when this artery reaches towards the face, it is giving off various other branches which includes superior and inferior labial arteries, then lateral nasal artery. The superior and the inferior label, they are given for the lips and as the artery it runs above, it gives the branches for the lateral portions of the nose and the ala of the nose and then it reaches towards the medial canthus of the eye where it ends and uh, the ending portion or the, uh, this, uh, the distal portion of this facial artery is given the term as angular artery. Apart from these branches, it is also giving muscular branches. And finally, this facial artery, it anostomos. It anostomos with the dorsal nasal artery, which is a branch of the ophthalmic artery. And this facial artery, it is uh, having a tortuous course like this, and it is uh, it is identified on the basis of this tortuous course, which begins from near the lower border of the mand mandible, and it is going till the medial canthus of the eye. Then the other questions which can be asked is regarding the maxillary artery because this is the largest branch of the external carotid artery and as it further runs, it is running in the infratemporal region and then it reaches into the pterygopalatine fossa. Now this maxillary artery, it is divided into three parts and it is divided by which muscle? It is divided by the lower head of lateral pterygoid. The lower head of lateral pterygoid, it divides the artery into three parts and each part is giving uh, further branches. Now, we, when we talk about the specific branches which are given by each part, from the first part of maxillary artery, the various branches which are given by this, it includes deep auricular artery. Then we have anterior tympanic artery, middle meningeal artery, accessory meningeal artery and a fifth branch is It is an inferior alveolar artery. These are the various branches which are given off by the first part. Then we talk about the second part. The second part of maxillary artery is giving many the various branches which is mainly going to the muscles and it is basically going to the muscles of the mastication. So for the second part, if we talk about the various muscles of the mastication for the temporalis, we have deep temporal artery. For the masseteric muscle, masseter muscle, we have masseteric artery. Then uh, for the pterygoid, lateral and the posterior, uh, lateral and the medial pterygoid, we have pterygoid branches. And apart from this, we have 
buccal artery. So these four branches are being given by the second part. The third part is giving origin to various branches. And if we talk about the third part of maxillary artery, in this we can remember it with the mnemonic three pigs. That means three times P is there. So if we write three times P, then I, G, S. All these are the branches of the third part. P is posterior superior alveolar artery. Posterior superior alveolar artery. Then next P is pharyngeal artery. Then the, this is the artery to pterygoid canal. The artery to pterygoid canal. From I we have infraorbital artery. Then G is for greater palatine artery. And S is sphenopalatine. So all these are all these are the branches of the maxillary artery. 